welcome back. Chef Jenna here. We are going to make today something um, very nice that I have been uh, asked a lot. It is chorizo or if you prefer pepperoni because they're a little bit similar. But the important thing is we're going to make it out of seitan. I have made seitan the other day. Click there after we finish this. And then I have changed a few things, adapted and uh, added a few more ingredients to make it more pliable, if you can say that. So I'm going to show you guys how I made this. So let's get started. Let's, let me get my bowl here. Oops, come here. In here, we're going to add one cup of seitan flour, gluten flour. You know, it's very difficult for me to say that, gluten flour. Okay, whatever. One cup. Am I boiling it? But you guys, please add one cup. There you go. So one cup, add it to the bowl. Important thing now, we have the dry ingredient here, which is going to be the, the gluten flour. Now we're going to work on the wet ingredients. All right, we're going to add one teaspoon, one and a half, come on, it was a little bit more than one, of um, tomato puree. We are going to add two tablespoons of soy sauce, half teaspoon of black pepper, onion powder and garlic powder. Nutmeg. It's important to add nutmeg. It gives depth to the seitan, in this case to the chorizo. A pinch of white pepper. I know what you're thinking. It's too much. Believe me, it's not too much. It's necessary. If you don't have all those um, spices that I'm showing you guys here now, because you're not a crazy spicy lady as I am, you add what you have. But the main ones that I would say are onion and garlic, pepper, nutmeg, and in this case, smoked paprika. Smoked paprika is going to give that smoke edge to the chorizo. Another thing, if you want, if you, uh, you can add a, a little bit of ketchup and a very, very nice tip. If you want it a little bit more pink, you add one or two teaspoons of beetroot juice. That will give that uh, red color. I didn't have any now, but next time I certainly will. Just to show you guys the difference, it gets a little bit more, the redness get the, gets a little bit more pronounced. Now, what I have made different from the previous seitan that I made, I am adding now half a cup of cooked beans. Any kind of beans you like. But bear in mind that the color of the beans might interfere in the color of the chorizo. We're going to blend that very well. All right, here we have, it's a sort of a paste. So let's mix it up, everything together. Scrape the sides, don't let anything in. Mix it all up until you have some consistent dough which you can uh, squeeze between your hands and you don't have anything left in your fingers. I'll show you what I'm talking about. But if you've seen the previous video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, you know what happens, it needs a little bit of water, water to the rescue. Yes. Little by little, because it's easier to add water than it is to, than it is to add the gluten uh, flour, because it's practically impossible to make everything smooth and everything uh, glue together after you add another, uh, a little bit more flour is not a good thing. 
Oh yeah, I had a little bit of leftover in here. So let me add. We're not gonna waste anything. It's very nice, guys. If you don't have, um, I tested the other day. If you don't have beans, you can add uh, chickpeas or you can add, mind you, hummus. You can add hummus if you have same amount. So now, here we go with our bare hands. The texture is very good. I'm very happy with that. It's a very good thing to add a little bit of cooked beans, even lentils if you have. So you need it for approximately to like from three to five minutes because then it gets easier to put it in an aluminum foil. Nice. Now, if you want a seitan steak, you can wrap it in aluminum foil like that and put it in the, um, in the steamer. But today we're making chorizo. So you cut in half first and then you cut in half again. So you should end up with approximately with um, four balls approximately the same size. Yeah, they're kind of the same size. So now what do you do? You roll it, make a little ball here and roll it, roll it. Don't worry if it's not perfect because we're gonna put it in aluminum foil and then it's gonna take a little bit of a sausage or chorizo shape. It's important that they are in the same size so they cook evenly. Because the worst thing is like you make that very beautiful seitan or uh, in this case chorizo and then because they're not the same size, one's cook and the other ones are uncooked and it's like so frustrating. Because th this is, I got a confession to make. This is my favorite thing to cook. I love making seitan. I love it because I love seitan. I'm a, I'm a loser for that. I really love it. It's important to roll it like I'm doing so we get rid of any uh, pockets of air that it might have inside. Now we wrap those guys here in aluminum foil. Wrap it. Not tight and don't wrap too much. Once and roll it twice. And the reason is, first, if you wrap it too tight, you won't be able to expand because it will expand. But if you wrap it too tight, it's going to get really hard. Yeah, we don't want that. You see it's tight, but you can feel a little bit more of air. And the same goes to the ends. So that's very important. Same thing. Roll it once, twice. Good job. Yay. Thank you. Okay, what I need to show you guys right now is that you cut a little bit of the end so they fit better in your steamer. They're going to be steaming for one hour, one hour and 10 minutes in medium high heat, but I want you to pay attention to one thing. Don't do like I did, I burn my pot because I forgot to add water along the process. I mean, come on, you have just this tiny bit of water in here and for sure it will evaporate in like, like I think 15 minutes. So put your uh, alarm for 10 minutes and then come checking in every 10, 15 minutes and adding a little bit more water, otherwise disaster. So we're gonna pop this in the stove for one hour and after one hour I'm going to show you the result and what are we going to make with it because we are not only making chorizo, we're going to make something else with it. Stay tuned. So one hour have passed and the seitan chorizo is ready, still a little bit warm. 
yeah no but we can manage it guys i have something to disclose to you guess what i forgot to put it in a seitan vegetable bouillon but don't go insane i forgot oh well what can you do i got worried but not worried enough to start over so and most importantly um the seitan it will uh, absorb all a lot of the flavors of everything you put it in so yeah i'm trying to console myself here as you can see <laughs> okay let's check how is our chorizo doing i'm so excited guys and i'm gonna show you how to make the easiest and most amazing pizza ever you know when you're really in the mood for pizza but you don't want to order or you don't want to go out you make it at home and it's like 15 minutes zap done happy days how about that look at that i'm so happy oh god i'm so happy that's the time you high five yourself yay high five mentally so let me slice to show it to you guys i'm very proud of myself you be too look oh look at that it's really cool because remember we blended some um beans yeah so it can sh it shows a little bit the beans oh hot oh my god so nice look Trying time. Oh. Mmm. Very good. Victory. I love it. And guys, that's it for today. I hope you stay tuned because I'm going to show you following how to make the easiest pizza ever with, of course, only a few ingredients. And I hope you have a wonderful week. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.